lesson we're going to take a look at an original composition I created called two bluegrass solos in the key of G number two now I already have one of these at the site of course and this is the second one and what I do for this is I create two arrangements as you saw and heard over a very common chord progression you would hear in bluegrass old-time country music and this week we're going to work on a little bit of everything for the, within these two arrangements. This certainly sits in an intermediate to an advanced level. There's going to be lots of eighth note, consecutive eighth note runs and big licks. Um, there's going to be some classic bluegrass moves that you hear all the time. Some nice cross picking fills to you know fill in the space where there's not much melody, and just overall you know gets a little bit of a bluegrass attitude. Um, that you hear, especially in that second arrangement. We're going to crawl up the neck a little bit as well and move back down. So a lot of stuff between the two arrangements that you saw and heard, okay? So if you'd like to access the full length lesson, just click the link down there below. It will shoot you out on, over to my site. And there you can learn about being a premier member. You can access this lesson and over 350 videos at the site and all three of my courses. This lesson is going to come with about 35 to 40 minutes of video downloadable PDF tabs, and four audio backing tracks to help you work your speed up, okay? Again, if you really like the way I approach learning and you think I might be a good fit for you as an instructor, an instructor give the Premier membership a look, all right? For now, we're gonna bring the camera on in, put the tabs on the screen, and start working through the first few measures of the first arrangement for two bluegrass solos in the key of G. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoy. All right, let's go ahead and start breaking down two bluegrass solos in G. This is number two, and we're going to work on the first arrangement here. Uh, remember, any uh, the, or the symbols below the staff are pick directions. The staples are down. The Vs are the ups. And any little numbers above the staff will be left-hand fingerings, okay? And those will be important for executing the arrangement as well. And, of course, be very particular about the right-hand stuff. I mark, put that in there for a reason. It's um, crucial for executing the arrangement at high tempos and doing so cleanly. So I'm going to play these first few measures, and then we'll break them on down. It starts on beat two. It's got the little pickup there. Um, so here it is. One, two, three, four. Downbeat of measure four. Uh, here it is again. Two, three, four, one. Okay, so again, we got the pickup. This first measure here is, is almost a full measure of pickup, and then you know the progression starts on measure two. Um, so the first marking in measure one is a quarter note rest, and then we're gonna start on the open A string, right? On beat two, open A, second fret A. Open D, 2nd fret D, open G, open D. Two and three and four and... And if you want, um, you can certainly hammer on those first few notes too. You can zero two hammer on. That will work as well. You can just take out the pick direction. Either way is totally fine. I'm going to pick it. And then measure two, um, we're going to get to the fifth fret on the D string. Okay. That's still a, that's a G note right there. Fifth fret on the D string. You can use your second finger or your third finger. Third finger is probably a little bit more efficient. You might see me use my second finger sometimes. But um, quarter note there, then open G, and then back to fifth fret D. Okay, so just kind of droning. And back to the open G, right? So one, two, and three. One, two, and three. And then B 
beat four of that measure. So open G again, and then second fret G. Get there with your second finger as well. Okay, so one, two, and three, four, and. Okay, upstroke there, an and. And then it's gonna slide into the downbeat of measure three. Okay, so there's, again, notice there's no pick direction below the downbeat of measure three there. Um, you know, the, the hammer-ons, pull-offs, and slides will often take the place of a pick direction. Here it does. One. Okay, and get there with your second finger. And then moving forward, third fret on the B, first finger, back to fourth fret on the G. Then we're gonna slide back down. We're gonna shift, so take that second finger and shift down. Again, the slide is taking the place of a pick direction. And then open G, and then two, three on the D. So, four and, so if I go from beat four of measure two, three, go. second but uh, so those three measures a couple times in context nice and easy and count us off here so one two three four one and I'm just gonna end on the fourth fret because that's the phrase the next phrase starts there get there with your third finger by the way let's do it again Two, three, four, one. A little, little, little quicker. One, two, three, four, one. Okay, so this is gonna be lots of slides, of course. And there'll be more hammer-ons and pull-offs as we get going, but those slides and the quick slides, you know, that sort of thing really starts to make your playing come to life and add attitude um, and just more expressiveness. So um, that's, you know, a lot of that in bluegrass soloing and in really any any soloing, like a lot of in the blues too. If you check out some of my blues lessons, um, it's in there as well. So getting a handle on those slides, pull-offs, hammer-ons, getting those clean and sharp, you know, they, especially in the bluegrass, get a little bit more aggressive and that it really brings the attitude out, so. Okay, so let's move forward here. I measures four, five, and six. We get over top of the D chord. And we're gonna do a little cross picking thing. And this is almost, I don't wanna say it's a Dave Rawlings thing. I mean, he does it a lot. Other players do it a lot, no doubt. But, you know, I, he's one of my favorites and I, he certainly is always doing this sort of move. You know, he's getting into this, this different kind of D shape. This is actually an inversion of the D. I'll get into that. But let me play those four measures, um, or three measures, and then we'll talk about it. So, two, ready, go. Again, two, ready, go. Okay, so measure four, we're gonna make this shape right here. So we're gonna, we're walking into it, right? So third finger on the fourth fret of the D, then sec, first finger on second fret of the G, okay? Third, <laughs> yeah, first finger on second fret of G, Second finger, third fret of the B. And it's really kind of, I'm making a D slash F sharp chord here. The F sharp, the third of the chord is in the bass, okay? The bass player is still playing in D or any other guitar player, but I'm putting that third, the melody will be on the F sharp, okay? Right there. And this is a really common little position. If you put your pinky there on the fifth fret of the A, which is a big stretch, and you fill out that sh that actual shape. Okay. You know, some of my 
high lessons like Angel and the Baker, St. Anne's Reel, they do a lot of this stuff right here, this shape. Um, it's very versatile and it's good to know. So we got that shape in measure four and I'm just gonna cross pick through it. So it's a quarter note first on the down B and then I'm just gonna B, G, D, B, G, D. And you can just even work on that measure all by itself, you know. alternates when I cross pick okay some people do down down up or a different pattern but I always alternate then going on measure five and then come to that B string again quarter note there and then I kind of just strum two and three and and I just strum across those three strings the middle three D G B if you hit the high E that's fine no big deal if it's open okay or you can bar it, but I don't usually bar when I'm in this position, um, and that's fine. Two and three and, and then D string, second fret, third fret, and then we go to the next measure, fourth fret on the D, quarter note there, so then one, then G string second, back to four on the D, and then second on the G, quarter note, and then two four on the G. So I'm just kind of bouncing between those two strings, right? One, two, and three, four, and down, down, up, down, down, up. So let me put all three of those together. Two, three, ready, go. Again, I'm kind of measuring four or five, really just kind of filling space, right? It's just a roll, like a banjo player. So, you know, anytime you need to fill up space, you can do this little roll. And then I get back into the melody. Two and three, four and. One more time, real slow. Two, ready, go. Let me play these first six measures for you, um, <clears throat> kind of moderate tempo here. So from the beginning, six measures. One, two, three, four, one. First six measures, and uh, let's move on when you're ready. One, two, move on. <laughs> 